Hello there. Welcome to this presentation. I'm Huai Cheng, and I'm delighted to talk to you today about our work on software hardware co-design for predictable latencies on modern flash storage. This is a joint work across University of Chicago, CMU, and NetApp. In particular, I will present our system called Yuda, a co-designed flash array system. Just like the Jedi Master, Yuda is small in size, but very powerful in delivering consistent performance. Spoiler alert, without Yuda, the tail latencies on modern flash storage can be bad. However, with the force of Yuda, we can help cut the tail latencies down to the level similar to the ideal scenario, requiring only small changes to the software and hardware stack. Flash storage is known to suffer from tail latencies. SSDs consist of parallel NAND flash chips connected to a controller. And the controller runs the flash firmware to manage all the IOs. Normal user reads usually take hundreds of microseconds. Due to the lack of in-place override support, the firmware runs a log structure and it maintains many background processes, such as garbage collection for steady states. GC migrates data internally across NAND channels and chips to reclaim space, but this will cause a lot of internal traffic. When user reads contained with GC, they will experience a tail latency of tens of milliseconds, which is already 100 times worse compared to the normal case. And due to the black box nature of existing SSD designs, users do not know when GCs happen and they have no controls over them. The tail latency problem is much worse in flash arrays. If we organize four SSDs into a RAID 5 and run a full thread read workload on top, each user request will be divided into three sub IOs targeting different SSDs in the RAID. Similarly, for most of the time, no GC is happening, and you will get very good latencies as shown on the right-hand side latency histogram, where X represents latency and Y represents the percentage of IOs in a certain latency range. However, if one SSD is busy with GC, the entire user request will suffer as it needs to wait for all the sub-IOs to complete the user request. As a result, a small percentage of user reads will experience extremely long latencies so this is a tail latency problem in flash arrays. And the core problem here is that even one slow SSD will make the entire flash array slow. To tackle this problem, the NVMe working group recently standardized the Predictable Latency Mode Interface, or PRM. PRM is a major leap towards more open host and SSD coordination for better performance. Briefly, it introduces the concept of time windows. The SSDs are expected to deliver consistent latencies during the predictable windows and perform garbage collections during the busy windows. Furthermore, it also defines the interface to query the time window status and control window transitions. However, the current PRM interface is still insufficient. For example, the device level predictability is too cost current for modding SSDs with many NAND channels. It is a best effort soft contract. The device can autonomously transit to the busy state and break the predictability guarantee. So the question we want to ask here is how to leverage PRM interface and enhance it for predictable latencies. To this end, we present Yoda. Yoda is designed around the PRM interface for tail-free performance. It manages, exploits, and extends the PRM interface with necessary software support at the operating system level. Overall, Yoda is designed with two principles in mind. First, we want it to be simple to improve CPU efficiency without complex policy designs. Second, we want minimal changes to both the software or hardware parts to enable easy deployment. Yoda employs several key techniques to overcome the drawbacks of existing PRM interface. For example, it uses a pro-IO latency predictability flag and busy remaining type exposure 
for fine-grained device-level business checking. Yoda formulates the time window length for guaranteed latency for general use and proposes a framework to help vendors program the time windows properly. Finally, Yoda presents an end-to-end -end design and implementation to exploit the proposed extension with minimal changes in the flash firmware and EVM interface, while leaving the majority of the management tasks at the operating systems. In the rest of the talk, I will introduce Yoda, a co-designed flash array system built on top of small changes to the PRM interface. Specifically, I will describe our journey one step at a time towards reaching a highly deterministic latency. Then I will show the evaluation results and conclude. Leveraging redundant data for performance is an old and effective idea. As demonstrated by many prior work, it can effectively uh, improve latency in different scenarios, such as replicas in distributed systems, Israeli coded storage systems, etc. Yoda borrows this idea, but for the PRM context. For example, we can proactively reconstruct the data using parity without waiting for the slow IOs. While the idea is simple and straightforward, there is a major challenge to make it more practical. That is, when to issue the parity reads. Similar to the speculative execution approach in distributed systems, here one could choose to wait for timeouts and then perform reconstructions. However, it is tricky to pick the correct time threshold. Millisecond level wait is definitely too long for microsecond level operations. On the other extreme, one could always issue full stripe requests. This will unnecessarily bring more load even when the SSDs are, are not busy. And the semantic gap here is that the host and SSDs are not able to communicate with each other about the device level business. Thus, so existing approaches heavily rely on guessing, causing it too lazy or too aggressive. First, Yoda advocates a new fail if slow SSD interface. The SSD will tell the host whether it's busy with GC and fast fail IOs on the contention on purpose. Here is an illustration. The host submits requests tagged with a special latency sensitive flag. And after receiving the submission, the SSD will check whether the user requests will be affected by GC or not. And if so, fast fail this request to the host as soon as possible without actually executing it. Upon receiving the fast failed IO, the host side can perform proactive data reconstruction to improve latencies. Let's see how it works in the RAID setup. Similarly, we submit post drive reads. Now, SSD3 is busy with GC, and it will quickly fast fail the sub IO. When the host receives the fast fail signal, it will proactively send an extra read to the parity SSD. If the first two SSDs and the parity SSD are not busy, then after about 100 microseconds, the three sub IOs will normally return. With this, we can reconstruct the data of the sub IO R3 with XOR operations. After that, the user level read can be safely deemed as completed. This approach has a large performance gain with very small overhead. Let's see how well the fast fail interface works under a TPCC workload. Here we show the read latency CDF. The X is the latency in milliseconds and Y is the percentile. The red line represents the base case. We can see from the dotted orange line that it improves tail latency a lot. For instance, we get roughly seven times better latency at a 95th percentile and five times at a 99th percentile. Overall, the fast fail interface can help cut tail latencies up to the 99th percentile. You may wonder why 99? Well, let's measure one level deeper. On the right, we show the percentage of different number of BD sub IOs uh, experiencing different number of concurrent GCs. For example, if X equals to two, the bar represents um, the number of IOs 
experiencing two concurrent disease. And we observed that the fast file interface can only help with IOs experiencing one GC. And that's why we still see a gap towards the low GC ideal performance. And in general, given K parity blocks associated with N data blocks, we can only tolerate K sub IOs. And for rate five, K equals to one. Let's take a closer look at why reconstruction doesn't work on the concurrent GCs. When two SSDs are busy, we might see one of the first fast-failed fast sub-IO trying to trigger the parity reconstruction process. But this time, reconstruction won't be fast because the parity read to SSD2 is slow as well. Similarly, if three or more SSDs are all slow, it couldn't help either. A better and intuitive solution is to choose to wait for the last busy SSDs, and we could still save some latency by doing reconstruction. But the problem here is that we don't know how long the business will last for each SSD, says a random wait approach might end up waiting for the busier SSDs with longer tails. Unfortunately, proactive reconstruction won't work when multiple SSDs are busy. To handle this, Yoda extends the interface a little bit more to communicate the device level business. In particular, the SSD knows exactly how long an I.O. will be delayed by GC, and then in the fast file process, along with the busy signal, we also piggyback the busy remaining time to the host. After the host collects enough information about all the busy SSDs, it can force the read to wait for the last busy SSDs and perform reconstructions. This way, we could still save some latencies by waiting for the last busy SSDs. Here is the result of the busy remaining time interface. Well, we can see that it further helps compared to the previous technique. It shifts the line to the upper left a little bit, but the tails are still there, as shown by the shadowy area. The reason is that we still have to wait for at least one GC to complete. And when concurrent GCs change to be busy for a similar amount of time, this approach won't work either. So can we do better to push closer towards the ideal no GC performance? To ensure proactive reconstruction will always be fast, we need to create a case where at most one busy SSD at any time. Is it possible? Well, the answer is yes. We can schedule the SSDs in the same array to perform background operations in different time windows. Thus, reconstruction is guaranteed to work. Each SSD can stick to its own time window in an autonomous manner, thus minimal coordination across SSDs is needed. One more thing to worry about is the safe time window length. Imagine an extreme case where you set an indefinitely long time window. You are essentially preventing GCs from kicking in for the other SSDs. So they will bear the risk of running out of space. Therefore, time window lengths shouldn't be too long. So the ideal case is that at any time point, we should have enough free space in any SSD to absorb the incoming write traffic. Let's consider the general case. We might have user writes keep coming for all the time windows, while when SSD is only allowed to perform GC in the certain time window. With this, we can formulate the time window constraints, which can be further expanded as this formula, giving us an upper bound value. The vendors could refer to the controller parameters in the NAND spec sheets to program the per appropriate window line. With all these combined, we can see that the Yoda line is almost overlapping with the gray no GC line, showing that Yoda has no tails. And Yoda really closes the gap between the baseline and the no GC ideal case. Yoda is implemented on two SSD platforms, Open Channel SSD and FAMU, a Kimu based NVMe emulator. Yoda only involves small changes to the firmware for faster failure signal processing and time window-based GC shifting. 
Our interface change is based on NVMe, and major Yoda logics are in the Linux software RAID layer for PRM management. For evaluation, we run various storage workloads, including nine data center block traces, six FileBench workloads, and 15 other data intensive workloads. For comparison, we re implement and compare Yoda with seven state of the art approaches, such as preemption, coordination, speculation, and suspension. We mainly report the retail latencies as right to not to be latency sensitive. Here are some Yoda results uh, TBCC workload. We show latencies at major percentiles. X represents percentiles, and Y is the latency in milliseconds. The red line denotes the baseline case. As we can see, the tail latency starts to become bad from the 95th percentile, reaching more than 20 milliseconds. The gray line represents an ideal no GC scenario. With proactive reconstruction enabled by our fail if slow interface, we can cut tail latencies up to the 99th percentile. With the busy remaining time technique, we can further improve the tail latencies at high percentiles, such as the 99.9th percentile. Finally, with the Yoda design, we can get latencies close to the ideal scenario, even up to the 49 percentiles. Here we show all the CDF graphs for nine trace workloads. And all of them show a similar pattern that our interface changes can provide consistent performance improvements towards the no GC case. Specifically, between two nines and four nine percentiles, Yoda can improve latency by up to 75 times compared to the baseline. When compared to state-of-the-art approaches, the details are not shown here, but Yoda is also more deterministic and efficient in tail cuttings. Furthermore, Yoda design doesn't satisfy sacrifice throughput. Here we measure the throughput in IOPS under different scenarios. We can see that Yoda delivers similar throughput as the baseline under read-only and write-only cases. Under a read-write mixed workload, we observe that Yoda can actually achieve slightly better read and write throughput. This is because that Yoda can improve the read performance during the read modify write process, says it will indirectly improve both user level read and write performance. Overall, unlike other designs which trade throughput for latency, Yoda achieves predictable latency without sacrificing throughput. Please refer to our paper for more details, such as time window analysis on multiple SSD models, as well as the trade-off analysis between performance predictability and right amplification, Yoda stack implementation, and more evaluation results. In summary, Yoda is a host SSD co-design to bridge the semantic gap for performance predictability. Powered by a simple fast-fail interface, it could perform timely reconstruction with synchronized time windows across SSDs. Yoda only involves small changes to the software and hardware stack for easy deployment. We hope that it will spur more future research around the exciting PRM interface. With that, I conclude this talk. Thank you so much for listening.